My name's Lynn Setchington. I'm a quilt maker based in Manchester in England. And I'm over here doing a fellowship for two weeks at the IQSC. So I'm doing a talk today about my background and my um, cross-cultural influences and kind of where I'm at now. So the first slide is my home sort of territory. I grew up in a small village in Yorkshire in England and um, it's kind of, I've put this image in particularly because it's similar to Nebraska and where I am today and it's very flat and um, rural area and that's kind of where I live for the first sort of 17 years of my life. So and this is my family in the picture there who I'm kind of missing a little bit at the moment. So um, I went from Yorkshire um, down to London. I did a course at Goldsmiths College which is the University of London and it was kind of a bit of a culture shock going from a small kind of rural community to the big multicultural city but it was a really great experience and something that I kind of um, really absorbed and, and loved and this image is something that I did as a student and it's um, just going back and kind of I think it's always quite interesting in these sorts of talks to sort of see where you came from and kind of how work has evolved so I put a couple of early images in to kind of give you a flavour of that and this one is um, kind of a very small hand embroidery, um, about four by six inches. And it's um, Brick Lane, which is a kind of area in the east end of London. And if you can see it, it's just a very simple um, stitch, very immediate sort of response to kind of the atmosphere and the place that I was in. Um, so move on to the next one. And this is kind of a little bit later. And this is um, still life and similar in that I was looking at atmosphere, kind of space, places, using hand stitch, which is something that's kind of been throughout my work. Um, and this is sort of mid 1980s. Um, and I was just sort of working, doing basically any jobs, really paid jobs, but kind of keeping stitching and making and exhibiting where I could. Um, the next slide is sort of the what the whatever you call the kind of pivotal moment, the the sort of um, sort of you know sort of light bulb uh, moment, in that the was this exhibition at um, the Whitechapel Gallery in London, which was in 1988, and it was called Woven Air, and it was. Um, textiles from Bangladesh and I'd never seen sort of anything like um, what was in the exhibition. It was the first time the canthers which were hand uh, embroidered quilts were been really shown in the UK and um, it was also um, woven cloths called jamdanis which are um, very fine muslins that they make in Bangladesh as well. But it's really the canthers, the hand embroidered quilts that I was drawn to and this is a, a kind of classic example and um, it was literally, you know, I kind of um, was completely bowled over by, by the work. They're made by women, they use recycled saris to make the cloths um, and they're kind of a real mix. Some are made by um, Hindus, some Muslims, some you get mixtures of um, influences from both religions in the pieces. Um, and you know sort of just just fantastic uh, workmanship and also there's another image coming up which is um, a much more simple kind of naive um, sort of uh, variation of, of the canther but it's a lovely sort of example as well and I'm kind of very drawn to folk art and sort of naive um, art in, in lots of examples so this is kind of um, you know another another kind of um, sort of style of that and it, I literally following the exhibition went home and kind of made my own version not looking at books or kind of how to's but this is um, the the first piece that I actually did and um, there's a, a detail coming up which shows a little bit better but it was literally all the objects that I had um, on the top of my fridge at home and I just sort of stitched them in a composition and some of the canthers the women stitch in objects that are kind of from their everyday lives and that they desire so there be earrings there be scissors there be um, you know sort of mirrors and, and sort of just everyday objects so that was kind of something that that drew me to them as well so there's a little a little detail and it sort of was fascinating because I'd not really worked obviously in that way before and I just found it really interesting and um, and just really wanted to kind of do more and, and explore this new way of working so I, I kind of carried on and and did a whole series and I had a little studio at the time in Brixton in South London and I really just just was going in there working when I could and then we had a, a kind of open studio 
and um, I sold a couple of pieces that I had in this um, open studio, the, the previous image, and then um, this next one, which is um, another kind of domestic scene, was all the teapots that I had in my, my kitchen and my kitchen shelf. And I actually sold this one to um, Audrey Walker, who was the head of Goldsmiths when I was a, a student there. So it was a real kind of affirmation that I was on the right track, that it was my um, old boss, my old sort of tutor, uh, and sort of, you know, really liked this this piece. And uh, and it really sort of, the, the sort of, you know, ball was rolling. I, I kind of went on from there. You can see in this piece that there's lots of detailed stitching. Um, like the canthers, I worked the objects first on the cloth and then filled in with the kind of background stitching, which kind of brings the whole kind of composition together. And, um, you know, as I said, it was just each one was different and I was just really enjoying kind of the making. So um, I, I really carried on in this way for a, a number of years. I moved to Manchester in 1992. I got a job at the Metropolitan University teaching half time on the embroidery degree. And um, I sort of had lots of other exhibitions kind of around that time. Key one was um, something called Out of the Frame, which the Crafts Council in Britain organised. And I had two large pieces in that one which is now in the Whitworth Art Gallery, and the other one is in the V&A collection and I put them both in thinking oh maybe I'll get one accepted and I had both accepted which was was great and they were quite different one was um, very colourful and was about my allotment my sort of vegetable growing in London at the time and the other one was a white on white piece which was more influenced by um, English embroidery. I'd started by this point looking at sort of the whole cloth tradition and quilting in England as well as the, the canthers. So, so that opened up other doors in that I had um, sort of coverage in lots of magazines, British and sort of American, and I was very proud that I was in a magazine called Practical Gardening that was um, a British publication and was for, for gardeners, and they came down and filled me at my allotment and, uh, and showed some of my work. So that was kind of really nice that it took the work to a, a slightly kind of different audience. Anyway, when I moved to Manchester, I had an exhibition, a solo exhibition up in Oldham, which is just outside Manchester. It's an old um, mill town and it's an area that has quite a large Bangladeshi population. So it was kind of appropriate for me to show my work um, in the gallery. And um, alongside my own exhibits, I did some workshops with some local Bangladeshi women and they all made a small piece using the canther techniques which a lot of them if they'd been born in Bangladesh kind of learned over there or had learnt as young children in Britain but didn't really practice much more so it was really nice um, for them they already enjoyed the opportunity of kind of having time to stitch and made some really nice pieces and so we put them on display alongside my work um, in the exhibition and we also had some traditional canthers that were borrowed from local people and from collectors so it was a nice nice mix and was an opportunity really for me to kind of see a lot of the large scale pieces that I'd done and that were borrowed back from collectors. Um, so this slide shows some of the work in the exhibition and this piece um, is called um, Objects of Desire and it's again very domestic scenes. Um, it's got stitched um, wooden spoons around the outside and the centre is a pink rubber glove so it's kind of a little bit of a, a fun piece as well. <laughs> um, there's a detail of it there as well that shows a couple of objects close up and the background um, is a, a pale green stitch um, cotton thread that kind of brought the whole piece together. It's quite hard with some of these early ones to kind of get the colours right because there's lots of happening within the objects themselves and then finding a colour to stitch the background to kind of bring the whole thing together was, was quite difficult but again kind of proved an interesting challenge. So we move on. So this is a, another example that shows the kind of influence of the English embroidery. Um, and quilt making and particularly the whole cloth quilts as I said. I've never done very much to do with patchwork quilting, um, it's much more about the stitching and the quilting itself. So this one was um, 
called DIY, and this is the in the Crafts Council collection, of Great Britain. And um, you can see it's slightly different in that the background quilting is kind of cross hatching. And for this one, I used some batting, as you call it in America, wadding, in between the, the cotton um, layers to kind of make the sandwich, which lifted the objects out a little bit more and gave more of relief so that um, you could see the details of the, the, the work more clearly. Um, following on from this, this is another um, sort of kind of interesting project that I did. Mid 90s, I um, applied for and got this commission to work up in a place called Belsey Hall, which is in the northeast of England. Again, there's a strong quilt tradition in the northeast, um, and it was a lovely opportunity. I was working in Belsey Hall, which is the house you can just about see um, behind the, the gardens on this, this slide. And um, the sort of commission was to make a quilt to go in the hall but it was um, something that had to be um, temporarily in, inside the house because the owners, the original owners of the house, which was now given over to, to um, a sort of charity called English Heritage, didn't want the house to be occupied. So they put the work on um, over a summer um, and did a sort of big temporary installation with lots of other craftspeople and makers that they used throughout the room. So there's kind of a dining room was decorated with a, a modern sort of dining table and um, furniture and cutlery and everything. And you'll see in this image my piece um, in situ in the in the living room uh, space. And the Hung, Hung Tung Heroes title of the piece kind of refers to um, twofold. It's it's the gardeners who you know obviously were doing the work kind of maintaining these lovely gardens that is really what people came to to Belze to visit. And I went and I didn't actually see any gardeners, but I saw lots of their tools around um, in the garden. So that's kind of um, about them. But also you see there's some spring flowers and the labels of the flowers that were around in the gardens. And it was kind of this time of year. It was March time when I went up. Um, to, to sort of look at the, the house initially and those sort of spring flowers were kind of you know appearing in the very cold weather so primroses we have bluebells um, and such things so they were also the, the kind of unsung heroes. Um, you can see in this one as well the kind of idea that relates back to the early canthers that were made not really for the walls but you can see it's sort of a mirror image so it could be viewed either way, it could be turned upside down and still be, be kind of looked at. And the idea with the canthers, the, the ones that were like this, they were made really for, for either a seating arrangement or um, to sort of put on a table so you wouldn't view them sort of up on the wall, they would be, um, be something that you could view from all directions. The stitching in this one is um, again references kind of earlier quilts, the strippy quilts, which were a particular kind of tradition in the northeast of England, and um, they were made from strips of old fabric. Mine is actually um, all hand stitched again. It's the blue and um, pale yellow in the background that are, are these rows of vertical stitching that make up the the bands at the back of the piece. So, okay. So following on from from this, um, I put this image in as I said, because I'm sort of interested in sort of um, folk art and just, just sort of popular culture, really. I take a lot from things like street signs and hand-painted um, signs around in just in sort of streets around where I live. And this one is, is you can see, the sort of um, heads of state in, in India. And I went to India um, in 1996 and Bangladesh on a kind of research, research visit um, to look at the textiles there. I went to Bangladesh to sort of um, meet up with some of the organisations that are now making canthers to see what was happening. Um, having done work with Bangladeshi women in Britain, I thought it would be interesting to see how traditions had evolved and altered um, and kind of whether it was still happening, which I, I sort of knew it was, but in a different form in Bangladesh. Unfortunately, I was there. I told everybody this, that there was a hartal, which is a kind of general strike. So I was a, I'd planned to be there for 10 days, and I stayed there for 10 days, but the, the hartal didn't lift in the whole time I was there. So there was absolutely no transport. There was no um, sort of way of getting out of Dhaka, the capital. So I visited lots of the NGOs and non-government organisations and charities and companies that were making canthers and selling them in the city. But I wasn't able to get out and visit the women in the sort of um, rural communities who are actually making the canthers. But it was, a, it was an interesting opportunity and interesting to kind of see. And then I visited um, 
India after that and went to Delhi and to the Calico Museum in Ahmedabad and out to Buj in the rural Kutch area of Gujarat and to Mumbai. So I kind of saw lots of different things and I saw more traditional canthers um, on the visit. So it was, was a lovely opportunity. And I put this image in because this is a piece that was kind of inspired by um, things I saw in India, lots of, again, hand-painted signs and um, just kind of advertising and things. This was sort of related to a, an image I saw of a man who was doing scissor sharpening on the street and he'd done these lovely hand-painted signs of big circles with his scissors in the middle. So um, this one was sort of just, that's how it came about, was inspired by that. And you can see the detail again on the right-hand side is the um, remote control. Another one from similar kind of period a little bit later and um, with all my work kind of although the colour's not always sort of very evident and sort of obvious the, the kind of colour combinations are always kind of important how the colours work together. This one's quite difficult because it's actually um, quite hard to photograph it's actually a, a sort of um, greeny background it might look a little bit grey on the image but it's green and then the stitch in the background stitching is actually a really bright pink kind of cerise um, thread and the objects you can see are in a, a pale yellow and with this one following on from doing the the, the piece in Belzy where I had the horizontal stripe stitching this one is circular um, patterns kind of in the background which together kind of make an overall pattern and um, it was interesting how the colours kind of balanced each other out almost the vividness of the the pink is kind of diminished with the background colour which I found I found really interesting you know sort of how until you actually try these things you never quite know how it's going to work and that's another detail of, of that piece this one is is more of the same in that it's um, the domestic kind of objects and that's something that has sort of been a, a constant throughout my work I'm, I'm sort of interested in documenting and sort of recording things from our everyday lives I guess particularly women's in that it's um, sort of things that are often overlooked that we use often and take for granted but kind of couldn't really do without. I'm also interested in objects that become obsolete. This is an old um, fashioned whisk that's um, used for beating eggs or making omelettes, whatever. But nowadays sort of people have a Magimix, have one thing that do, kind of does everything. But I kind of am a bit of a collector of, of, um, of sort of quirky objects like this. So it's nice to kind of include them in the work as well. Um, there's a big big bit of a jump now in, in years in that um, those later images were sort of 2007, no sorry 1997, um, 1998 and this piece is from about 2004-2005 so it's about a five or six year kind of gap. I was carrying on working, I did a few commissions in between. Um, I had my two sons in this sort of time period so I didn't do quite as much um, sort of work took a little bit more of a, a kind of back seat but I started sort of really kind of getting back into doing my own thing um, sort of 2003-2004 so these works kind of show a, a kind of shift in a, I suppose a sort of change in emphasis and thinking about new directions. Um, still enjoyed the kind of way I was working but I felt I wanted to look at other avenues, other sort of ways that I might be able to work and, and kind of look at issues and things that were interesting to me. So this piece, as you can see, is bean shopping, and it's made from um, what we call Suffolk puffs in England, but you call yo-yos here, and it's um, circles made from plastic carrier bags, so it's shopping bags um, that have kind of been cut into circles and then stitched and pieced together to make this new quilt, and um, you can see it's sort of using, using uh, lettering in this piece. And um, it kind of came about really through looking at you issues of recycling and how we sort of waste so many things and also as with some of the other things issues of consumerism and sort of how disposable everything is um, you know sort of nowadays and that's kind of harps back to this my interest in objects and, and sort of how things get thrown out so quickly and kind of taken for granted um, so this one is interesting for me in that it was sort of um, also a kind of document of again of my life in that the bags were shopping bags that I'd used for um, myself, kind of really my, kind of I suppose, clothes shopping. See kind of detail here, a close-up of the peach, which might give you a little bit better indication of the, the technique. But it's um, a mix of, of bags that I'd uh, used to kind of, you yeah, know, been given when I bought my sort of clothes. So there's a mixture of shops that I'd been to, from Next to Mex and 
um, oh gosh, God knows where, um, shops around around Manchester. So I kind of felt it's interesting because it's like a, a kind of um, a sort of snapshot of, of my sort of shopping habits, really. And, you know, if you looked at it in 50 years' time, if it was still around, you'd be able to dissect it and say, oh, yes, she's been to this, this and this shop and, uh, you know, would, would tell you something about what, um, what sort of shops I went to. So this is the um, next piece is uh, Mums Are Heroes, which is in the Perspectives exhibition here at the, um, the Quilt Study Centre. And this was done around the same time, and very similar theme, but obviously the outcome, the way of um, working the, the quilt is quite different. And it reflects back to the earlier kind of canther tradition. And I've been interested in doing something for a while around, I've done a couple of other pieces actually that are um, around the idea of the basket quilt, which in British quilt tradition um, is a, a basket or a sort of vase of flowers or something would be stitched onto a, a marriage quilt and these, these sort of talking sort of you know early 20th century I guess um, and the basket of of flowers or the, the sort of basket were there as a symbol um, to sort of suggest prosperity and the fact that your basket would always be full was a, a good omen really on a marriage quilt. And so I, as, a, as an avid bag collector, <laughs> I decided it would be interesting to um, include sort of um, some bags. So I've done some earlier pieces, as I said, that were kind of my collection of, of bags, but I like the idea of bringing in the sort of everyday, as I've said before, and documenting kind of carrier bags was, was sort of, um, as well as talking about consumerism and our shopping habits, it's, it's kind of the power and domination of, of, um, of supermarkets taking over um, with, you know, sort of um, how we, we all have to go there to buy everything and the little corner shops are going and you know, it's a bit of nostalgia in me, but, um, but kind of it is interesting as well just to kind of really look in detail at what was on the bags and I think that thing of I said that over look in the everyday um, was kind of interesting in how I kind of chose to depict these very sort of ordinary objects and kind of give them different sort of status um, and document them for, for kind of a long, a long period. Um, so the stitching is sort of the, the canther style. Um, if you use a slightly different technique again in the background, it's more a diamond pattern which used to kind of create a, a sort of um, a sort of interesting optical effect so your eyes moved across the piece and um, the bags are, are stitched in white thread. The background is a, a kind of creamy colour so it's only when the white stitching sort of comes into play with the, the background that the, the objects are, are lifted out. Um, but it's still a piece that I sort of hold very dear. It's something I, I found you know really interesting to do. It's another one in the same series. Um, that I was asked to make for an exhibition in England and um, just decided to work the same same idea um, but using different coloured fabrics as I said kind of how interesting it, it can be just sort of changing the the background of the cloth and seeing what happens to that image so and this is um, as you can see is the co-op which is the cooperative society which is sort of um, kind of you know um, Co company that's still going in Britain but is um, sort of fair trade um, uh, supermarket. So following on from the, the sort of exploration into the, the Suffolk Puffs, the yo-yo the quilts, I um, sort of put in a proposition for a commission in Manchester and this is just the one slide I've got of this, this project but um, it was called Stitching Up Oxford Road and it was to bring together communities of the disparate communities of Manchester Oxford Road. Oxford Road's a busy thoroughfare through the city, but it's got two universities on it, um, the major hospital, uh, the Whitworth Art Gallery, the Deaf Institute, the BBC. So it's kind of fairly important, but is mainly known as a bus route through the city. Um, and so there was funding to do something to kind of try and link and join the communities in some way. So I had this idea of using the the Suffolk Puffs as a as a sort of um, a, a sort of tool that we could we could work on with all these different groups. So I collected carrier bags on Oxford Road um, over one week. So we had materials to play with and work with. And then I went in with my students and some um, sort of graduates into all these different venues and did a series of workshops over a couple of months making the Suffolk Puffs um, in, in the 
places. So some were drop-ins, some were kind of prescribed to be with a certain sort of group of people on a certain time. But we collected and got all these Suffolk puffs and then I had to kind of decide what to do with them all. I'd said I would make some sort of large-scale quilt, but I really didn't know how many we were going to end up with. Um, anyway, this is us laying out all the, sec the, the, the Suffolk puffs and kind of deciding. And I kind of more or less decided to kind of carry on with the theme of the lettering and it actually, um, the final piece is a large scale quilt that says Manchester Oxford Road. And it was just a really nice project because the range of carrier bags, which I don't think happens in the States so much, but we had some fantastic coloured bags as you can just see from from this um, sampling and, and how we're kind of trying to put together the different letters and make it work. And I tried it in all different combinations. We stitched individual the individual letters and then I laid it out in one long strip. I tried it in sort of different um, formations, different colour combinations. And it was really nice to kind of document all that and play around with it. And then we literally stitched it all together and um, it went on display in the university on Oxford Road and we invited all the participants that had been involved to come and, and see it. And I also had some posters made of the, of the image which we gave back to each of the, the participating venues. So it was nice to kind of give, give something back to them. Um, 2007, this, this one is, I know because it was the, my children's school centenary um, year and I thought it would be really nice to do something with the local community and um, with my quilt making kind of um, history and knowledge I thought that would be the perfect thing. Quite a large Asian population in the area where I live in, in South Manchester and within my children's school so we have this is this image is in the community group um, room in the school and they have a kind of meeting coffee morning on a Monday morning um, every week and so I went in to the group and said would they be interested in doing some work with me in helping to make the quilt because I knew I wouldn't be able to kind of do it on my own and the whole idea was that it involved lots of people within the school and everybody was really interested so I went to the head teacher and sort of discussed ideas with her and she was very keen so um, basically we used children's drawings we got kids to do each to do a drawing and then I had the onerous task of picking 24 one from each class um, to go onto the quilt which we got some of the mums and families and carers to do the stitching for and um, and place them onto the onto the cloth so this is kind of one of the early early stages where we're just getting going with that and it was nice because some children um, took them home if they ones that were chosen to have their their um, drawings stitched and some did it with grannies and some did it with you know relatives some mums did it for the children some were done by sort of people who weren't necessarily related to the child whose drawing was picked but it's a real kind of cross-section of people across the school and then I put the whole thing together and we had some borders, um, we stitched some borders on it as well with the 20 different countries that were represented in the school. And um, the colours, predominant colours were yellow and black, which was the school colours, so that's the yellow background and the black, black stitching of the border was to kind of tie that in. And then I went in for a couple of days um, when the whole thing was put together to do all the quilting. So some I did with some of the mums in the coffee morning group, but I also um, s sort of arranged it with the school that they had this very tight schedule where they got every class to come through the hall. And as you can see here, we're sitting, this is a couple of my students doing the, the sewing with um, some of the, the classes. And they all kind of came through over these two days and everybody sort of sat down and did at least a stitch into the cloth. And it was really nice because I got, um, all the office staff and the dinner ladies and everybody that was working in the school kind of had had a little um, input into it so it's really nice and we finished it um, for the sort of celebrations of the the centenary um, in the summer and it's sort of still up on display um, in the main hall now so it's really nice to kind of still still have it around um, the same year which was a busy year 2007 I went to India again um, back to Ahmedabad and this was a three week um, visit and I was working as part of a project um, called Design Camp and the idea was to work with local craftspeople in all different disciplines to look at sort of um, uh, kind of inventing and kind of making a broader range of products that they would be able to sell both for themselves but also we were working with a kind of major hotel in the city who was interested in selling things in his shop um, at the hotel and also placing objects and artifacts within the rooms in the hotel so um, this 
images, the Ganesh Festival, which happened to be on while we were there, and also um, the other image is um, some of the kite makers. Amnabad is the kite capital of India, so there's a whole street where they make kites for the festival that just happens for a couple of weeks, and I think it's January, early February. Um, so one of the other people that I worked with, um, I worked with a few different makers. This is um, a lady called Sita Ben, who's a, um, a bead maker sort of artist, and um, I kind of designed several things. And one of them was this um, map image of the city of Ahmedabad, and the. Um, the red is the kind of main part of the city and then the brown is the old city and then the little kind of purple black splotch in the middle is actually the house of mg the hotel that we were working with um so i designed it on graph paper and then see ben sort of actually did the the sort of um clever bit of doing the the making of it but it's a really lovely project to be involved in and we also did some coasters and things to do um you know more practical things to go in the in the kind of hotel and it's it, i was very sort of felt very privileged uh, this is her home and it's really nice to go in there and and work with her um, one of the other groups I worked with was a group of um, women from originally from the Kutch area, the Girat rural area, who'd come to Ahmedabad to sort of make money. And they do reverse applique and applique products, garments, um, pillows, kind of curtains, all sorts of things. But fantastic skills, but the sort of range of imagery and products was kind of the same as you would see in other parts of the city. So again, not that varied. Um, so I designed a series of bags, again in my bag, bag phase, um, shopping bags and using the, the phrase handmade which was really sort of, you know, so many things in India are handmade. Um, I thought it was really nice to kind of celebrate that. So I literally did a design onto a piece of paper using um, sort of stencil kind of cut out from, from newspaper to make the lettering and gave that to them with different borders and, um, and some different coloured fabrics um, which were bought from the um, sort of the cardi cloth it's called which is hand woven kind of according to Gandhi's principles so um, nice and, and sort of um, user friendly and so they made up this series of bags in different colour combinations from um, from my designs and it's a really lovely again sort of project to be involved in because I'm usually somebody who does the making so it's nice to kind of be a little bit different and have time to come up with lots of designs and ideas and be involved with somebody else um, in the making. Um, following on from that I kind of came back and I actually sold some of the the bags um, in Manchester and a, a friend has a, a shop down in London and she sold some for me um, and it's kind of something that I'd like to go back to there was problems in in terms of kind of um, setting up links there to get people to get the materials and make sure the the sort of quality control was sort of in place and and then getting them shipped back out to Britain so it's something that I think the group that I worked with was still sort of working on and looking that may be able to to kind of um, get back involved in it but um, I'm not sure how it will will work out anyway it's something sort of on the back burner as they say anyway I came came back and um, Sort of, I'd been looking at pin cushions. Um, another sort of interest. I was sort of interested in historical textiles and whether it's quilts or embroideries. And these pin cushions are in Platt Hall collection, which is down the road in Manchester. And they were just lovely sort of um, artifacts and um, a whole sort of collection. I think so from one um, lady. I can't remember her name now, but I just was really drawn to them, and I, I sort of wanted to use them. And in a way, the beaded piece that I did with Sita Ben was sort of along these. Lines lines and I guess it relates to the the way I work with using the little small stitching to make up a, a kind of bigger picture it's the same it's the same kind of process really um, and this sort of series um, coincided with sort of kind of quite a, a sort of emotional well very emotional kind of period in my life in that um, my mum died and we had to sell her house back over in Yorkshire and it was quite an, an upheaval in terms of although I hadn't lived there for a long time it felt like home and I had a lot of connections with the village and and um, you know people there and so it was kind of quite a sort of emotional response but I it was sort of a nice thing in that I was able to go into my studio and just kind of make work about 
whatever I wanted to. So these series of pin cushions were about that sense of home and, and not just my sense of home, I guess, of, of what home is and belonging and identity really and where we feel we, we kind of belong. Um, and I've been over to the um, symposium here previously and sort of seen some um, the schoolhouse quilts and it's not something that we really get in Britain as far as I know it's the sort of tradition isn't isn't the same um, and the kind of sense of history there but yeah, I liked that that image of the house and of course it related to, to sort of what was going on with me at the time and I guess I'm always kind of working I work half time um, with degree students in embroidery and it's always kind of interesting how they work and the materials and the projects that we do um, with the students and I just sort of I don't know where well I think the pins this is this quilt is um, house quilt is made from safety pins and I think it kind of linked on from the um, pins in the pin cushions and the idea of safety the pins and the house kind of coming together um, I just wanted to draw I guess in a different way and this sort of was a just I don't know it just just kind of evolved really and it was fun I kind of enjoyed the fact that they work was again I think something that I couldn't quite predict I think with some of the pieces the canther pieces I felt a little bit too in control of really and it was nice to have a new way of working um, that kind of you know produced slightly different results and and even though the image is kind of a repeated house the fact of how the um, pins are put together each one is slightly different and there's kind of one upside down which are kind of is is you know sort of a thing of, of things not always been as quite as simple as they seem um, this one is is a drawing is actually before I'd actually put the pins through the cloth and these ones are all in wool I uh, again kind of felt it'd be interesting to work in a slightly different um, material all the other ones done in, in cotton previously so this is kind of weeping willow which I think you have here as well as a kind of um, a sort of emblem of, of mourning and sort of um, you know sort of traditional early embroideries and, and quilts it features um, another one along the same series going back using the kind of canther stitching but in quite a, a bold way and really looking at bringing in more varied um, stitching and well not stitching varied colours so um, sort of the stitching is much more in evidence in in this piece the houses are appliqued but they're not kind of turned under their raw edges so it's just quite simple um, imagery there with that one there's another one from the same series that I did a little bit later but this is um, I was just trying to kind of capture houses and these are all houses in the village where I grew up and I guess there was this sense of, of sort of displacement a little bit of, of even though I do go back there and visit it was it's different in that I don't have the house my mum's house and sort of the same kind of um, connections there and so some of them, you know, the houses I'd sort of known a long time and were very familiar with. And the, all the stitching is just really, really simple running stitch. I didn't want to make anything complicated. It was just a very kind of, um, you know, sort of what was the simplest way I could kind of, um, you know, depict these these places. So, um, so it's, you know, it's, it's something I, I'd actually quite like, just the simplicity of it. and. Um, again, sort of influenced, I think, by seeing some some work over here of red and white quilts, which I just liked that that um, simple contrast. Um, a little bit longer to go, but nearly nearly there. So following on from the series of house quilts and and that whole sort of body of work that I did, I um, got another um, funding. Um, project which was a community project in um, near where I work in Manchester and the funding was through my university and um, we had to put in bids to do a project with local groups and mine was I called Hume Sweet Hume so it kind of very much led on from from that body of work um, but rather than using the house kind of emblem as the kind of unifying theme I picked maps as the sort of overarching sort of um, link between um, between the project and this is the kind of invitation again this is uh, an image on a skip hire a lorry that I, I just sort of saw at the time and it, it is very much kind of the sort of thing that I you know identify with and, and just like in popular culture I guess ev everyday images um, and so this project was on over six months but it took about three months after the organizing meeting groups planning and um, I was doing my teaching alongside it so in essence I guess the whole thing was really over three months um, 
We started um, in January and I said I was doing it part time up until July and I had an exhibition at the end of it in, in July um, in the Zion Arts Centre in Hume. So I'm just going to quickly run through a few of the, the images of the groups I worked with. This is an ESOL class which stands for um, English for Speakers of Other Languages. So it's a really very mixed group. Um, with all of them I went in for slightly different lengths of time and sort of did different things but with this group um, there were people from Somalia, from Eritrea, from Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, North Korea, Portugal, Portugal, Poland, um, Ivory Coast, you know, real, real cross-section. And um, But what I always say I really enjoy about hand embroidery particularly is that it's something that you know, most people have an understanding of. And I didn't have to teach the group any skills. They all had skills and they all absolutely loved doing this. And I went initially for one week and ended up staying, well, it was one session, but I ended up going back um, for three different sessions, one with a morning class and one with an afternoon class. And they ended up stitching maps of their home countries and mostly they did the flags, maybe put their names on and some of the main um, names of the, either the country or the cities in, in their countries. And the pride in, the, in seeing them doing it was just, just absolutely wonderful. Um, another of the groups, this is HARP, which is a group that works with people with mental health um, issues. There's, they do arts and crafts classes, but I knew they were interested in doing um, some sort of stitched piece. And this group actually wanted to make a quilt. Um, they were interested in making something together. So we divided it up into nine sections and between us we all did um, one of these nine squares and then I pieced the, the thing together and, um, and we did a little bit of quilting to kind of hold it together and you'll see that image coming up but that was again a lovely group um, really enthusiastic and keen, keen to work two more um, of the groups the one on the left is um, a group called Venture Arts which is adults with learning disabilities I'd done some work there before um, and kind of knew them quite well but it was nice to go back and they've got a young staff team lots of um, younger people working there, two of my ex-students are now employed to work with them so it's really good and um, you know lim skills are reasonably limited but the people are always very enthusiastic and, and kind of keen to do stuff so we, they each did a small stitch piece there as well. And the other group is um, an after school club in the area, these are two of my students that came along with me. To each of the groups I tried to get students to come and help with the with the sewing so they um, they were involved in the project kind of um, you know working with people was was good experience for them and for the groups they were working with and me as helpers. Um, this is Tracy who's one of our um, MA students who uh, again helped with some of the the work. She's particularly interested in um, embroidery, how it's taught now in primary education in Britain, which is less and less. So it was interesting for her to come along and kind of see my approach and, and be involved um, with some of the younger children she worked with. See this piece is a quilt that we made, I made with one of the after school groups and it's uh, kind of reverse applique but it's using actual maps. I contacted the geography department within the university and they donated a few old um, what we call Lord and survey maps to me which we, we used and cut up and made made this um, this piece. So this is the actual exhibition um, in the Zion Arts Centre and this is some of the ESOL class that said they all were thrilled to come along and see see their pieces. You can see their work, um, the stitch cloths on the wall. And what I did at the end of the exhibition was everybody had their own work back. I didn't keep any of it. Um, the idea was that it sort of moved on and had a new life. There was no point it I felt it just sitting in my studio um, and kind of been been sort of just stored there. So it was really nice. Everybody's really keen to have their work back. I did make a short um, video um, at the end of the project on the last day of the exhibition so that I had some record of it and we intercut with images of the workshops as well. So it's kind of nice for me to have some sort of record but um, that was all, all I have. Um, so this is the HARP group, some of the, the people that kind of came came from there and this is their, their kind of quilt that they have um, on their wall in in the um, in the centre which is next door to the Zion Centre. Um, this is um, the last image of this project but this was a sort of interesting kind of diversion for me and this is um, a living a living map, it's a map of Britain made out of plants. And this was a little bit of a said a, a new a new venture for me but something I was interested to do. This is the local garden centre in Hume and basically what we did they didn't have 
uh, areas to work on the floor and make kind of um, floor pieces that initially, initially anticipated. Um, so we made this kind of vertical piece that's largely um, a sort of wooden frame that's got a kind of soil as your filler, as your batting in between, and then it's got a membrane over the top with um, a sort of wire grid, so it's kind of little squares that you could cut through and plant, then plant the plants. So this is this is sort of filled with seed and plants, and the idea was that the kind of England, the Britain, the main sort of part of the um, the land was a, a green um, sedum and then the outer area, which is the sea, is a kind of a blue, a slightly different one. And it's interesting, I've been back a couple of times and it's still growing, it's still there, it's taking its time. We didn't have enough um, money to kind of fill the whole whole surface, but it's interesting and I, I think it's something I would really like to do more of. I love the idea of kind of making something that changes over time and um, you know, there's a sort of different different kind of pace to it. So it was very much a, a sort of trial trial piece, this, but um, I, that's what I like about doing these kind of projects. It offers new opportunities and new, new challenges. Um, last couple of images coming up. Um, for World AIDS Day, which is, happens to be my birthday, the 1st of December, I was approached by my colleague who's a professor in microbiology at um, MMU and she said we may be able to get some funding through the Society of General Microbiology um, to do a project um, around AIDS Day. Obviously she was interested in um, sort of AIDS Day being a bi biologist and it being a virus and she was actually doing a project called the Bad Bugs Book Club and she was um, looking at um, a book called um, Dorian by Will Self which is sort of modern day take on Dorian Gray about the AIDS virus. So she was actually doing that on World AIDS Day and she thought it'd be interesting if we could combine something, um, a quilt, to go with it. So anyway, we managed to get the funding and so I went ahead and designed um, a smallish quilt because I knew we didn't have a lot of time. Then I went out and worked with four or five different groups and this is actually a, a local high school um, in the area and I worked at, at several other places as well and you can see it's made up of the red ribbons that are sort of worn on um, AID, World AIDS Day and also it's red cross stitch which I thought linked in well and it's kind of like the, the cross as a, as a kiss and I drew the words there's the final image um, respect and protect which was one of the slogans the kind of key um, the phrases for the 2009 sort of um, campaign and I thought it was a nice nice sort of statement it's very sort of all-encompassing and, um, and sort of interesting bringing in the text idea again so I drew the lettering on and started the stitching just initially around the letters to make sure nobody would stitch into them and and then we took it out into the groups and so you can see the variety of kind of patterning with the stitching and the the crosses and the ribbons and it was really nice to kind of do and uh, as I said um, I wasn't worried about it being sort of perfect and very even it's very much the fact that it probably had a hundred different sort of hands on it that you know people put in what they could and uh, and you know participated in in the project so that's that's that one the last couple of slides is right up to date um, where I'm at now and this was something that I saw when I came over to the um, quilt symposium last year which was down at this image was um, one of the uh, crazy quilts that was down at the Historical Society um, Museum in town and I just thought it was really fascinating never really appealed to me the crazy quilts but these ones had lettering and writing on them so I guess that was the, the sort of draw um, and this one I just thought was really funny it had lots of different sort of strange um, names it's got Frank and Jesse James um, it had something about a mind reader I think or some some guy in the middle who was obviously visiting so again it's kind of a, a little sort of time capsule of, of the period the people that were around um, around Nebraska at that point so I kind of it very much been in my mind and, and I think also the fact of handwriting how we do less and less of that and um, it's you know dying art form and um, something that we yeah just don't practice enough of so I, I sort of thinking how I could kind of combine it so these are series and I'm still working on them so it's still early stages of development really but um, using wools again so I actually pieced together these these cloths I know I've done them wrong because they're not 
traditional way of doing a frayed quilt but um, it's, a, it's a start and it's my shopping list that's what they're, they're kind of um, depicting and it's this thing of the fact that if you shop online you don't need to write anything down you you know that sort of human touch has, has gone but we sort of use um, the backs of old envelopes to do a list so it's kind of a combination of my family's writing so it's kind of bringing, bringing members of my family into the, to the pieces and I just like the fact of how we all write in different ways and it is very much sort of um, you know something that's that's kind of human so um, this is another one that's just a little series of them that I made that are in my studio um, and yeah sort of trying out different stitches to, to sort of give the different sort of handwriting um, in the pieces so um, and there's a little, a little detail I think that's the last image there so just about on time so there's my shopping list fish fingers batteries C sausages chicken and carrots so and there's my contact details. I'm just updating my website at the moment, but it's still online. It's www.lynnsetrington.co.uk. Um, so you can have a look and find out more. That's it. The end. Ta-da! <laughs>